Hey everybody and welcome back to Pierce Gaming News. Hope you guys weekend was pretty great. I didn't upload one on Sunday because there was really nothing to talk about, so I figured might as well do it again today, right? Alright, so Xbox One sales are up 84% month to month. So that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool feat by Microsoft. And, I mean, obviously PS4 came out on top, and it's not really surprising, but Microsoft is still excited about their console because pretty much, I think, once it went down to 349 I don't know, and I think that's the permanent price now. I think people are like, well, pff, for 50 bucks cheaper than the PS4, why not just get the Xbox One? It has more features. And there's really no good exclusives out right now for the PS4 anyway, so it's really like, oh, okay. And Microsoft uh, said that users spent a maximum of 74 hours on Xbox Live throughout the month of February. And that's a pretty good amount of time. I'm pretty sure that's maybe average set, uh, 74 hours. Xbox Live sets new records, quadrupling global gaming hours of Xbox One and Xbox 360. Compared to February 2014, says Mike Nicholas, who's the vice president of Xbox Marketing. We are grateful for our fans for choosing to play on the Xbox One. Well, I would be too, you know. But that's a cool thing. Good thing that their sales are considerably going up now, which can only mean, like, good things for the future of Microsoft. They might be taking a loss at the price point of 349 but... In the long run, people will buy the Xbox Live so they can get more out of the console. So they'll get that money back eventually. It's just trying to get it into the hands right now of consumers at the lowest possible price, even if it involves taking a loss, because that means you'll get more users and more games sold and more Xbox Live Gold selling, which is all pure profit for those guys, you know? But yeah, good thing for Xbox to, you know, get going with that. So uh, that interests me after that, so I pulled up the VG charts here, and these sales are as of February 21st, and uh, Wii U sitting at 9.3 million, Xbox One sitting at 11.6, and PS4 sitting at 20.2. So uh, Xbox One's about 9 million sales behind, which isn't a whole lot, it's about half, you know, of the PS4, but... It, they're catching up, like, considerably, because I remember when the PS4 was sitting at, like, 13, and they were at down at, like, 6 million sold. So they're gaining ground really quick here. And the 3DS is, you know, blowing everybody away at 51.5, and the Vita sitting at 10 million. They kind of gave up on the Vita, which kind of sucks, because I actually like the Vita, but there's no good games to play on it, so it's like, uh, I'm not going to buy any games for it anymore, because there's, it's useless. If Sony gave up on it, I should just sell it, you know? But yeah, it's good thing Xbox is catching up. They're uh, making commends with what they've done, and now they're trying to play catch up. And like I said, Sony is, thinks they're the top dog, but they're not going to be the top dog for, for very long. If they can't even do a ten dollar or fifteen dollar price cut off their console, it's pretty uh, looks pretty stuck up by Sony, in my opinion. So sticking with the Xbox news here, Titanfall DLC is free forever on Xbox One PC and Xbox 360. And usually these, uh, c this content costs $10. But then the Titanfall official Twitter page, the content is free starting now and will remain free for all users who purchase Titanfall for the Xbox One 360 and PC. So that's gonna be pretty cool. I mean, I don't know how many people play Titanfall that much anymore, but for the people who still play it and didn't get the DLC, that's pretty nice. I think EA should just give up on the series. I don't, that's just my personal opinion. It's not really that good of a game. I'd, if I were to play a first-person shooter, I'd probably play Call of Duty over this. And I don't even like Call of Duty. You guys probably know that already. So, pretty much is what he came out and said. The Zampella guy, I'm not sure what he does, but he's here and he's talking. <laughs> if that makes any sense. He, oh, he's a co-founder. Alright, he came out and said, I guess EA announced a sequel so I could play Koi and pretend I don't know anything about it. Or yeah, so we're working on a sequel, he said. I don't know why they'd really be working on a sequel, to be quite honest with you guys. Because after this kind of, I guess, flop, it's not as bad as a Watch Dogs. Because Watch Dogs sold a lot and they're making a sequel. But that series, I think, they got a lot to improve upon. Because I, I actually had hope for that game. But getting beat back to the point of Titanfall, that game, I kind of think, did the same thing. People bought it because it was hyped up to the max. They got it, played it, and were like, wow, this game's not as good as I thought it was. And... They probably won't sell as many in the second round unless they made it way better. And I guess there's no official name, he said, but they're working on that. 
and that's the main focus, starting up a second team and doing smaller stuff too. So, I mean, they're taking it slow so it can be multi-platform. And I don't think it's going to sell as much. Just, I really don't think it is. But, hey, at least the DLC is free for you guys who own Titanfall. If you guys want that, go ahead and get it. It's going to be free. And last bit of news, it's not really gaming news, but I thought it was pretty important to talk about, I guess, tech news. And Cortana, 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 Jesus, reportedly coming to Apple and Android later this year. And this is what Eric Horvitz, managing director of Microsoft Research, said. This kind of technology, which can read and understand email, will play a central role in the next rollout of Cortana, which we are working on now for fall time frame. Of Microsoft Research and part of, you know, Eric Horvitz, we're defining the competitive landscape of who can provide the most supportive services that make life easier to keep track of things that complement human memory in a way that help us get things done. Uh, there was no official release date, but like I said, it was in the fall, so I can't wait for that. Even if it's like a dollar or two, I'll, I'll probably still buy it. If it's over that, it's not going to be worth it. But Cortana, Cortana, why do I keep saying Cortana? Cortana is a pretty sweet thing. I mean, I've played around with it very little. I own an Android phone, so my friend owns a Windows phone, and I messed around on his Nokia, and it's really, really cool. It tells you, like, traffic updates and whatever have you. It's better than Siri, and it's better than the S Voice or whatever the thing's called in the Galaxy, and I think it's going to be a cool thing, so look forward to that as well for Cortana, and Cortana, There's, I don't even know. Whatever. It's not that big of a deal to me anyways. <laughs> and I guess Microsoft even added Cortana to the desktop with Windows 10. And this is, like, the coolest, like, because Microsoft does things right is what it comes down to. And it's always good to see Microsoft coming up with new innovations like this. And let's see. I don't know what else they're going to come up with next. The HoloLens. I'm going to probably talk about that in one of my videos once there's a little more information um, released for the HoloLens because... I think that's going to be better than virtual reality, I, in my opinion. But only time will tell. It depends if it's done right the first time or not. Because say they get uh, the HoloLens out, it doesn't work. That's going to suck. It's going to not work how everybody thinks it's going to work, and they're going to draw off. They're going to draw the wrong market in, and then people are going to buy it, and we're like, "Wow, that was a waste of money." So yeah, I'm going to hopefully in the near future. But I think Microsoft said it was going to be two years before it even would come out, two or three. But hopefully in one of these videos, when there's more information about the HoloLens, I'll talk about that in a dedicated video and just, you know, tell you what I think about it and what, what it does and whatever. All right, guys, that's all the news I got to talk about today. Make sure to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.